Good morning, Greater South. Let the church say amen. Everybody doing pretty good this morning? God got us through another week. Just think, this time last year, we wasn't doing nothing like this. Wasn't on Memorial Day. Everybody just stayed at home. A lot of times when things like that happen, God is giving you time to build a relationship with him. So sometimes they t God takes stuff for us, from us, so we will get closer to him. And so this, this time last year, we weren't doing nothing but sitting around, and everybody was really scared and praying, and, and really God had us where he wanted us to be. Had us in prayer mode, and, you know, by halfway, some of some time he put us in some situation where we had to have faith. Y'all know what I'm talking about, because it wasn't nowhere else to go, wasn't no doctor, wasn't no vaccine this time last year. You just had to trust God. So by me saying that right there, I'm going to say this. We ought to be praising God and thanking him right now. Because right now, it's a little bit better. You know, God has brought us out of this thing just about. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we just want to thank God for that. Uh, a lot of people didn't make it through this. A lot of people, young people, older people, there's families that suffer through this. They still got long callers out here. So God has been good to a lot of us. He's been good. So I, for that, I just want to say thank you. I want to stand here myself and say thank you. I want to say thank you for protecting the church, my, my pastor, for my, my house, you know, friends, family. It could have been so much worse. So I just want to say thank you. We're going to get, we're going to get our sermon going. We want to thank everybody watching on Apple TV, Facebook, you know, Roku, Fire Stick. We want to invite you to join us. Uh, it'll be on YouTube one hour after uh, the sermon. And after that, we're going to have a devotion by the deacons, and after that, we will have a song, a prayer and a song. Everything to have breath, praise God. If you allow you to see this beautiful sunshine today, that's enough. If you allow you to have food on your table so you, you better wouldn't be grumbling, that's enough. If he allow you to open your eyes to see, that's enough. If he gave you a hand to wave and foot to pet, that's enough. All these things that I'm just saying is enough. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Why don't you just call him up and tell him what you want, what you want. Well, if you sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. If you sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. If you sick and you can't get well, tell him what you want. Why don't you just call him up? And tell him what you want, what you want. Well, if you want your soul saved, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want your soul saved, tell him what you want. That if you want your soul saved, Tell him what you want. Why don't you just call him up and tell him what you want, what you want. Well, call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Oh, call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. 
and tell him what you want. Why don't you just call him up and tell him what you want? Amen. Let us pray. Once again, dear Lord, it's just me. Coming to you as graceful as I know how. Thank you for last night's lying down. And thank you for this early morning rise. And thank you for everything that you have done. And thank you for the things that you're about to do. Continue to open up thy wonder and pour us all out blessings, Lord, that we won't have room enough to receive them. Father, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Well, just this one, though, dear Lord, I thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. Allow me to say a word of encouragement this morning. Allow me to shake somebody's hand and tell them, good morning. All these things, dear Lord, is done through you, through your grace and through your tender mercy. And once again, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all my family. Thank you for all my friends. Continue to bless my family and friends. Special prayer go out to my dear brother, Johnny Gardner, who's going through his trials and tribulations. But Father, you know what you're going to do for him because it's already been done. And Father, I believe that in the bottom of my heart. So Father, let your miracle come through one day. Allow him to be back in the church hole once more and again. And Father, bless my pastor. Bless him to teach one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Bless his family, Lord. Let him encourage his family through the years and the months and the days that he have and continue to bless him according to thy grace and thy tender mercy. Bless all the sisters and ministers. Bless all the deacons, dear Lord. Allow us to lead the church in the proper way that it should go. Not for any shape, form, or fashion, but to always give the authority and the glory unto you. And Father, bless this congregation. Those that were able to come out, those that are not able to come out. Go into the church, go into the churches around the countries, dear Lord. Let them not preach about things that is not pleasing in your sight, but let them preach your faith, your loyalty, your grace, everything, dear Lord. Continue to open up their hearts and continue to get in their minds. And Father, last but not least, bless this country. We need it, Lord. Right now, things are going on that some folks just don't understand. Those that do, they, they also know what's going on. So, Father, continue to bless the, the president of this country, the vice president, and all of those leaders that are trying to do what's right, dear Lord. And continue to be with us, continue to guide us and direct us. And, Father, going to the nursing homes because somebody's laying there on their bed of affliction. Going to the jail cells because somebody's been incarcerated who don't know why they're there and the reason. And last but not least, dear Lord, when we have done all that we can do down here in this mean and crucial world, I want to hear you tell us these words. Well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have just been faithful over a few things. Come on up how that I may make you rule over many. And this is my prayer, dear Lord. In your precious and darling son, Jesus' name, I just pray. And let the church say, Amen. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. And the reason why I like that is because God hides things, and it's not that the king gets honor for looking for what God is hidden. It is what is already in him. In other words, for you to look for what God got for you, you already got to have some God in you. That is in that time, because it said the glory of honor of the king, not to the king. So there should be an eternal desire for you to look for more. That, that is what you do, looking for what already exists. Sometime on your phone, you'll see clear the cachet. You ever seen that before? 
clear the cache means clearing something that is there, but it's gonna be used for future events. So God has something, some cache out there that is need to be un that need to be uncovered that's gonna be used for the future. He has something out there for you, but it has to be in you to search it out. The difference in this verse right here when you go Old Testament and New Testament is that uh, in the Old Testament that the good king sometimes wouldn't search God's matter out and the nation, the nation suffered. When the, when, the, when the, I'm sorry, the wicked king, the good king, when he searched out God's matter, the nation prospered. So when you read the Old Testament and you see that the king was wicked, he didn't search what God had for the nation. And so the whole nation suffered. Famines, uh, 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 no food, war, enemies killing kids. So that's what happens. So as a leader, as a man and a woman of God, you search out what God got for you. But God has to put it in you for you to look for it. I'm saying, I'm sitting down. God is looking for seekers. That's what he's looking. He ain't looking for nobody sitting around looking. He's looking for the same. He's looking for you. He wants you to look for him. That's what he, that's all he looking for. I'm looking for somebody who's going to sit down and chase me and chase me and chase me and court me. Tell me how good I am. Tell me what I've what I done. Yep. I just looking for. That's what we used to do when we was running out these women. All the women running after the men. We told them how good they looked. They told us how good we looked. We said everything we could to get it done. So, Greater South. That's what God is looking for. He want us to tell him how good he is, what he's done. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for doing it. I should have been dead. Thank you for not for waking me up. I'm vertical. And that's what he's looking for. I'm he's looking for somebody. They always say that us on compliments. Well, we do because God wants compliments. Yeah, we want to know if we preach good, but God wants to be praised when he done something good. So why wouldn't we want to know it? Men, we, we are made in his image. So we need to know. You don't have to tell us, but it would feel good to know it because God wants to know how good he's done. Say amen, greater south. You ain't woke now, then you still in the bed. God looking for somebody who's looking for him. It, it, and princes and everything on the inside of you. That's what's in you. That, that's why we're the seed of Abraham. Boy, y'all finna make me preach. That's why we're the seed of Abraham. Because what's in us? Now what we're doing is using up whatever Abraham had in him. That's what we're doing. So you look for God and God will make himself available. I promise you. He will not hide from you if you ain't, if you are looking. And I'm done. I done said way too much. <laughs> Let's buy hands for a word of prayer. And after that, we're going to have the song by the choir. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you one more time, Father, for allowing us to come into the sanctuary and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, before I say another word, I want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ. And Father, after that, I want to thank you for our pastor. I want to thank you for all the seeds he sowed, Father. I want to thank you one more time for being a harvest, Father, in his field, Father. Father, right now, I ask you to bless him and strengthen him, Father. Father, I want to thank you for the men behind the scenes. I want to thank you for Troy Hyde and Barry Nixon and, and, and Brother Floyd. We want to thank you for these guys, Father. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to get in Reverend Java Summers, and we want him to give us a word, Father. Father, right now we're lifting up our hands and we bow down our knees, Father, and we are confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord, Father. Father, right now we thank you and we ask you to come into this sanctuary, Father. Father, I ask you for your presence. I ask your presence, Father. When your presence shows up, we are automatically on holy ground. So, Father, right now I want to be on holy ground. I don't care nothing about nothing else but that. Because, Father, if you show up, something has to change, Father. Father, right now, I ask you to install woman, boy, and girl, Father. Install it. Download your Holy Spirit so they can know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So they can know their roles in the kingdom. So they can know their roles in their families. So the husband can be the leader and the submit. So, Father, 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 right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm your son, and I'm asking you by faith, Father. I'm asking you to show up right now, Father. We want a word from on high, Father. We want a word from heaven, Father. Father, right now we stand here, Father. We lift up our hands, Father, and we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus Christ to show up, Father. 
Make this place just like the day of Pentecost. Father, we want to see people who are hurt. We want to see people that say, I ain't hurt no more. Depression, you got to go in the name of Jesus. My back hurts, but you got to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, right now, I thank you for the afflictions. I thank you for the hard times. I thank you for the troubled water. I thank you for showing up in the fourth watch. I thank you for raising me on the fourth day like Lazarus, Father. When it said it was too late, he thinks now. But Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you. I want to lift up your name. I come to have church. I, I didn't come to be quiet. I come to be lifted up. I come to be strengthened. I come to be loved. I come to show love. I come to be forgiven. I come to forgive you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want you and we're going to ask you to show up. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Lord, I'm down in this mean old world. Why don't you come, come on, on, Jesus, and see about me? Said, I'm down here, Lord, and I'm all by myself. Whoa, come, come on, on Jesus, Jesus, and see about me. You, my friend, to the end, and you never let me Whoa, down. Come on, Jesus. To see about me, I'm down, I'm down, here way, here way, for you to come, for you to see about me, said I'm down on bending knees, begging you oh, please, come on Jesus, and see about me, said I'm down on my bending knees, begging you oh, please, oh, come on Jesus, and see about me cause you my friend to the end and you never let me down come on jesus and see about me i'm down i'm down here way here way for you to come for you to see about cause me cause i need you right now lord right now hey, hey, lord hey. i need you right now Come me. on, Lord, and see oh, about Lord, me. Lord, come see about I'm me. I'm down here on bended knees. Come see about come me. Come on, Lord, and see about Lord, me. Lord, come see about hey, me. Hey, hey, cause I'm down. I'm down. Here wait, here wait. For you to come. For you to see about cause me. Cause I need you right now, Lord. Right now. I need you right Cause now. I need you right now, Lord. Right now, hey, Lord. Hey. I need you right Cause now. Cause I need you right now, Lord. Right now, hey, hey, hey. I need hey, you. Hey, come hey. on hey. and see about me. Come on, come Lord. Come see about Say, me. Come on, Lord. See oh Lord, me. come see about I me. I need you in my Please, life. Please, Lord, come see about Say, me. Come on, Lord, and see about yeah, me. Come see about I'm me. I'm down here on bended knees. Come see about Say, me. Come on, Lord, and see about me. Come see about me. Come on, Lord, and see about me. Lord, come see about me. Come on, Lord, and see about me. Come Come see about hey, me. Hey, hey, cause I'm down. I'm down. Here way, here way. For you to come. For you to see about me. I need you right now, Lord. Right now, hey, hey, Lord. Hey, hey. I need you right now. I need you right now, Lord. Right now, hey, hey, Lord. Hey, hey. I need you. Right Cause 
right I need you right now, Lord. Right now. Hey, hey, hey. I need hey, you to come hey, on hey. and see about me. Come on, Lord. Come see about me. Come on, Lord, and see oh, about Lord, me. Oh, Lord, come see about I me. I need you right now, here, Lord. Yes, come see about I me. I need you right now, come here, on, Lord. Come on, Jesus. Come see about come me. Come on, Lord, and see oh, about Lord, me. Oh, Lord, come see about I me. I can't make it down here we right now, We need you, Lord. Lord. Come see about I me. I need you. I need Please, you now. Please, Jesus, come see about so me. Come on, Lord, and see about well, me. come see about I me. I need you right now, hey, here, Lord. Lord. Come see about me. I need you right now, here, Lord. Come see me. Ooh, yes, sir. Right now, come see about me. I need you right Please, now, here, Lord. Come see about hey, me. Hey, I'm down. I'm down. Here, way, here, way for you to come. For you to see about me. Yes, sir. Man. Yes, sir. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Somebody need you. Yeah. Bless your name, oh God. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love to call on the name oh, of Jesus. Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I love. I, I love, love to call. call. Yes, I do. On the yeah. name of the Lord. I love. In the name of Jesus, there is love in the name of Jesus. There is love in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I love, I love to call. Yes, I do. On the name of the Lord, that name is so sweet. I love I calling love on it. God yes, I do. On the name of the Lord, oh, there's healing in the name of Jesus. How many can be a witness to that out there? Jesus, there is healing in the name oh, of Jesus. Jesus, there's healing yeah. in the name of Jesus. Great old sound. I love. I ain't just saying it just to be saying it. I really love to call on his name, y'all. Yeah. Oh, I love calling on him. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. And I'm glad about it. Yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There's power uh, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I, love I love to call uh -huh. on the name of the Lord. I, 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 I love to call, oh, I love call on, on the him. name of the Lord. Oh, I call on him. Call, call Jesus. Jesus. I call on him. Call, call Jesus. Jesus. Uh, I call him call Jesus. Jesus. Uh, I call him call Jesus. When my burdens get heavy, call Jesus. I call on Jesus. Call Jesus. When I get lonely, 
call Jesus. I call on Jesus. Call Jesus. When friends turn their back on me. Call Jesus. I call on Jesus. Call Jesus. That habit you can't break. Call Jesus. Just keep on calling on him. Call Jesus. That addiction you can't break. Call I Jesus. dare you. Just keep on calling on him. Call Jesus. How many know God will answer prayer? Call Jesus. If you just call on his name. Call Jesus. He'll make a way. Call Jesus. Out of no way. Call Jesus. Just call on Jesus. Call Jesus. Just call on Jesus. Call Jesus. Just say Jesus. 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 My favorite subject is Jesus. I love to call Jesus. The more I call him, the better I feel. Jesus. Jesus, 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 he's my way in, Jesus, Jesus, he's my way out, Jesus, he's my way through, Jesus, Jesus, my way over, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus, call him, or if you really know him, Jesus, have you, Jesus, tried him, Jesus, 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 demons, Jesus, tremble, Jesus, at the name of Jesus, the atmosphere, Jesus, changes, Jesus, at the name. Jesus, oh Jesus, yeah. do you know it? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, have you tried it? Jesus, Jesus. won't God fix it? Jesus, Jesus. won't he make it all right? Jesus, Jesus. can't nobody Jesus. do me like it? Jesus. Can't nobody Jesus. hold me like it? Jesus. Can't nobody Jesus. rock me like it? Jesus, Jesus. 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 He's a battle actor in the time of war. He's a battle actor in the time of war. He's a battle actor in the time of war. Jesus, Jesus, he's so much Jesus over cancer. Oh, he's Jesus over diabetes. Oh, he's Jesus over your address. Oh, he's Jesus over my address. I call him I call him I call him I call him Jesus 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 Now Jesus went Cavalry To save a wretch Like you and me They hung him high They stretched him wide He hung his head For me he died That's not how the story ends. Jesus. That's not how Jesus. the story ends. Jesus. I said that's not how Jesus. the story ends. Jesus. Three days later, Jesus. he rose again Ooh. with all power, Jesus. all power, Jesus. all power Jesus. in his hand. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, I love to call on the name oh, of Jesus. Jesus, I love to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, I love, I love, I love to, to call. Yes, I do. On the name of the Lord. I, 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 I love to call. I love calling on, on the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Call his name. Yeah. If you're happy yeah. and you know it, yeah. shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Jesus, won't he make a way for you, yes, he will. won't he bring you through, yes, he won't will. he bring you over, yeah. call him, call, call him, call he's, him. Able. he's able, he's able, he's able.
Lord. Yeah. He'll carry you through. Yeah. If you have to reach way down, Hello. he'll pick you up. Hello. He'll turn you around. Yeah. Yes, sir. Calling on the name of Jesus. It ain't nothing like it. There's nothing like that name. Mm. That name right there. That name right there. That name right there. Mm. It just makes you feel something. If you don't feel nothing when you say that name, you need to do some soul searching. That name. Mm. We want to thank our brothers for giving God praise. When two or three are gathered and everybody's on the same accord. Can't nothing stop it. Can't nothing stop it. That spirit. Mm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you and ask for forgiveness, oh Heavenly Father. Because you know I ain't nothing but a filthy rag, oh Lord. But I thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand here, oh Heavenly Father. For letting me wake my, open up my eyes, oh Heavenly Father. And just say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh Heavenly Father. Because without that, we wouldn't be here today. So we thank you for all that you do for us, oh Heavenly Father. But we especially thank you for Jesus. For Jesus. Thank you for your presence, oh Heavenly Father, that you have came in and supped with us. Thank you, Lord. Now I just ask for the Holy Spirit to lead me. Throw my flesh to the side. Because I'm toe up from the flow up. And it's all about you, oh Heavenly Father. And your kingdom building. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to keep you long today because I know everybody wants to get out and eat and do their thing. But... We're going to start on right here. Proverbs 18 and 21. Now I'm coming out of the New King James Version. And we're going to do Proverbs 18 and 21 and Matthew 12 and 37. Death and life are in the power of of the time and those who love it will eat its fruit and can you go to Matthew 12 and 37 now this one right here is Jesus talking but it nails it home 
This nails it home. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Now, for a subject, what are you saying? What are you saying? Now, if we look at the tongue, the tongue is a muscle. It's a muscle. I mean, it's not like your legs or your arms, but it's a powerful muscle. Because it has damaging effects. It can give you power or it can break you down. See, the thing is, uh, when I first came to this, uh, I remember waking up on Saturday mornings and there was this thing, conjunction, junction, what's your function? And... And, I, I, and it was talking about a little man that was putting words together on the railroad. And I never thought that I'm almost 50 now. God be the glory. And I'm still remembering that and how it affected me. Words can affect you. Words can affect you. When I was growing up, that woman right there can tell you I was a big liar. But I always told off on myself because when I lied, I said, you know what I'm saying? I told, every time I told off on myself. That's how she knew that I was lying. But because I had that lying spirit in me, I thought I was getting over. But I wasn't. But I wasn't. But I thank God for her because she was praying. She was praying and pouring good into me. Pouring good into me. Because whoever thought that I'd be standing here. But glory be to God. But see, that's the way things work. That's the way words are so powerful. Words are powerful. Here go another thing. Uh, do y'all remember when uh, we was little, uh, another thing came on where you had two people and they would be putting words together like one be standing on this side, do. And then another one be over here, or. And then they'll come together, door. You know? <laughs> or they'll say, shh. Yeah, I think I'm going to say something else, aren't you? <laughs> but then they say, uh, shut. But right there, that's how powerful words are. And it's coming from this. This little member right here has strength like no other. It has strength like no other. If you look at Proverbs, it was written by Solomon. Written by Solomon. There are over 900 Proverbs in there. 900. But he asked, God, when God went to him and asked him, he said, all I want is wisdom. Wisdom. Wow. Who ever thought that? Wisdom. Most folks would have been asking for wealth, health, you know, all other kind of stuff. But he asked for wisdom. Why wisdom? Why wisdom? Because he knew dealing with God and being a leader, you got to have wisdom. See, everybody up in here is a child of God. But you also are a leader, a mentor. Folks look up to you. So you got to have wisdom. And people are watching what you say. People are watching what you do. But they mainly watching what you say. My guys be catching me on some stuff sometimes. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I told you, I'm tore up from the floor. 
And they'd be like, hey, you can't be saying that. You're a preacher. Every now and then I slip up. I'm not perfect. But here it is. I'm glad I'm not perfect. There was only one perfect person on here. As one. And that was Jesus Christ. See, this is the thing. Stop trying to look for perfection. Stop looking for it. It's all a progression. If I can step here and look back and then trip, hey, I done good. I done good. It's the little things. It's the little things that you can build stuff on. It's the little things. And that's the reason why when you talk, you got to have responsibility for your actions. You got to take responsibility for them. You got to be in control of what you say. That's the reason why in the Bible it says, slow to speak, quick to hear, but slow to speak. See, you can't have your emotions involved when you're speaking. You can't have them. Because no telling what comes out of your mouth. And the thing is, it won't be really to that person. It's be stuff that doesn't happen way back here. That want to come out at that one time. And that's the thing you got to control. You got to guard your mouth. You got to guard it. Everybody up in here should be yelling, screaming, and giving God the praise. When sisters and brothers are all coming together on one accord and giving God the praise, shouldn't nobody be looking over, why are they saying that? Because you don't know what they've been through. You don't know what they've been through. And trust me, you keep living, you're going to go through something. Keep living. You're going to go through something. But the thing is, you got to embrace pain. You got to let it be your teacher. See, everybody's talking about going back to normal. Going back to normal. What is going back to normal? What is it? I mean, right now, folks are lining up, trying to find their next morsel. Uh, people are, we done had over, what, 200 and something mass shootings just this year alone. What is normal? When, when God, when the COVID hit, it changed everybody's lives. It changed everybody's life. But in that time, what was you doing with your mouth? What was you doing with your mouth? Was you on social media talking about folks? <laughs> was you talking about folks? Was you giving God praise? Because here it is, things was able to slow down. You was really and truly able to examine yourself. You was able to examine yourself. Now, some folks went out and started making their own money, getting, uh, came up with their own uh, businesses, things of that nature. Some folks was able to find that they was more than what they found they gift in God, that where they can help the church. Others was able to get out and help the poor. But here's the thing. When, at that time when you and God was alone, did you ask him, what can I do for kingdom building? What can I do to help kingdom building? What can I make things better? How can I make me better? Did he answer you? Did he answer you? Because we always talking about giving God the praise. But we do all that in public. What do you do when you're by yourself? What do you do when you're by yourself? Because right here, 
right here is life and death. What are you pouring into your kids? What are you pouring into your kids? Everybody's talking about all these young folks out here shooting and doing this and that. But what are you saying? Are you doing anything to help them? Don't be afraid of them. If God gave you the courage to get out here and do things, speak to them. I speak to all of them. I don't care if they pants hanging low, they weren't uh, in the gang, I still speak to you. I still speak to you because God gave me this for a reason. He gave me this for a reason. You need to use that. Not for a negative, but for a positive. Because if you're putting positive out, positive will come back to you. I seriously believe that. I believe that with all my heart. Positivity will come back to you. Because that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. Last week was Pentecost. What did you do? What did you do? Did you encourage anybody? Did you even recognize the Holy Spirit? Did you give it praise? Yeah, the Holy Spirit is what's in you. It's what's in you. God came. He moved out of the way. Jesus came. Jesus moved out of the way. We're here with the Holy Spirit now. Like fire. <laughs> That's what we got to do. We got to give praise to God whenever we can. Stop talking about each other and help one another. Encourage one another. If you know folks that are not in this church right now and should be, go get them. Go get them. Call them up. Hey, I would just call and see how you was doing. Text them. I was just texting you, seeing how you was doing. You don't know how much that will help somebody. That will help somebody. But you got to give this right here, you got to exercise it. But exercise it in a positive way. Exercise it in a positive way. Because if you look at Proverbs, you look at it in the Greek uh, pro. It's four. It means four. Verba. Verbs. That means word. Four words. Proverb means four words. If you read Proverbs, if you really sat down and read it, it will show you that it's a day-to-day -day uplifting guide for each and every one of us what to do, how to do it. It's instructions on how to do things and be wise about it. Everything that I read in that book from chapter 1 to chapter 31, it stepped all on my toes. Stepped all on my toes because that's what it's for. It's instructions on you to live day by day. It gives you wisdom. And it also lets you know that you can't get over and I'm not alone. That's why I'm saying take responsibility for this. Watch how you talk to folks. Watch how you talk to folks because you are what they say you are if you talk negative. If you talk positive, you will change the whole narrative. At your job, at your home, wherever you at, in the church. Everybody that's coming up in this church, we, yeah, we got masks on, but what are you saying to each other? Are you trying to avoid certain people? That's not church. That's not church. The thing is, we got to realize what our tongues are really for. And that's to give God the praise. So that's the reason why I asked you, what are you saying? What are you saying? You got to watch what you say. 
You look at it. Jesus came down, and he was the Word. And the Word was with God. And it was made into flesh. So, if you look at that, the Word came down. The Word came down and became flesh. You look at also, too, when God made the earth, he spoke it into existence. He spoke it into existence. So, if God spoke things into existence, that same power, that same power, why? Because he took and blew the breath. The breath of the Holy Spirit within you. He blew the breath. So if he spoke that into existence, what you doing? What are you saying? You, what are you saying? God spoke it into existence. Now remember this. He brought, he breathed, uh, he blew the breath up in us. But he also touched us too. He also touched us. That right there should be encouraging enough. That right there should be like, Lord have mercy. I just thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Some of us in here had COVID. Some of us was real sick. That's, I, and that was the sickest I've ever been. And I thank God for it because I was able to sit down and realize, realize that if it wasn't for him, where would I be? Every, every night that I was able to open my eyes up, I gave God the praise. I gave him the praise. When I was able to speak, I gave him the praise. That's what you got to do. Anytime you are up and moving and wake, give God the praise. You got this tongue. It's a powerful thing. Use it. Use it. You know, and it's also, too, you got to look at it, too. God also spoke death and judgment. He also spoke that. When we fell, you look at Adam and Eve. Look at what he said to them. The sweat on your brow. When you have kids, you'll be in pain. I'm paraphrasing, I know. But that's it. He spoke it. He spoke it, and that's the reason why we have judgment and pain now. Because of the first Adam. He failed us. But God spoke it. And that's what we got to look at. God spoke it. And this is what we, what, who are you blessing? Or who are you cursing? Who are you blessing? And who are you cursing? That's the thing you got to look at. That's the thing you got to realize. What am I saying? What am I saying? Am I helping or hurting? And trust me, when it comes to your kids, I understand. Sometimes they're like, mmm. And I'm sure my mama done mmm with me too. I know her and my dad did. But the thing is, they poured more positive in me than negative. They poured more positive in me than negative. That's the reason why with my girls, I pour more positive in them than I can. And that's what we got to look at. You got to be a blessing because you know better. You know better. You got the instructions. You know how to do it. Be like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. 
That's all you got to do. Just do it. And when you start sending out positivity, things start to change within you. Things start to change within you. You start looking at things different. Instead of running to a fight, you'll be like, ah. I hope everything works out for them. I hope they come to a conclusion and find a peaceful thing. But nah, I'm not going to be part of it. That's the thing you got to look at. Stop looking for negativity. The Bible talks about it. Don't be running to a fight, run away from it. You just as guilty as they are. If you are not trying to help somebody, then just keep your mouth shut. If you're not trying to help someone and encourage someone, just keep your mouth shut. Because I guarantee you the Lord will shut it for you. He will shut it for you. See, that's the thing. The tongue can be a good thing or a bad thing. The bad thing is lying. The bad thing is lying. Trust me, I, I know. That's the reason why I, it's easy for me to spot a liar now. Because I used to do it so much. That's my testimony. That's my transparency. That's the thing you got to look at. Everything that you used to do, some of us, and everything that you went through, it's easy for you to spot somebody else. It's easy for you to spot it out on somebody else. Wow, it's got quiet in it. <laughs> but also, too, what are you doing with that tongue? Not only lying, but are you gossiping? Are you gossiping? Some of y'all don't know how to talk unless you're gossiping about somebody. And half of the stuff that you're talking about ain't even the truth about them. But let it flip. Let it flip. And then folks are talking about you. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? It's not good, I know. And I know some of you, I don't care what they say. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You can tell that to somebody else. Yes, you do. They can talk about me all they want to. Only God can judge me. See, when you say that right there, only God can judge you. Let them judge you. Let them judge you. See, I know it's a saying, but watch what you say. Watch what you say. That's the thing that we got to be more careful about. Even when your enemies come to you, are you praising them? Are you helping them? Hmm? That really puts you to the test. That really shows you your growth. When your enemies... Because God said it in Psalms. You'll be at the table with your enemies. But he's also said, I will anoint your head with oil. Your cup runneth over. <laughs> Surely. But he said he's with you. He's with you. But the thing is, you got to be the light in dark places. Some folks are wondering, why am I still working at this job? God got you there. Stop saying, why am I still working at this job? Thank God that he gave you a job. It's a lot of folks out here are not working right now and want to work, but they can't. They can't because of what's going on. But even that, are you doing anything to help them out? The people that you know, 
Are you encouraging them? Are you trying to help them? What are you doing with this? What are you saying? But also, are you cussing folks out? Huh? Are you cussing folks out? This is the stuff that you got to be aware of. Because like me, like I said, I slip up. I fall. But I know that God is going to grab a hold of me and pick me up. Dust me off. But here it is. I got to deal with the consequences of what I said. I got to deal with the consequences of what I said. That's the thing you got to realize. What are the consequences? So you can't get upset when you get punished by God. You can't. And you know. I done said some things in that work. I bumped my head. All right, Lord, I got you. Yeah. Because you know. If you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. That which is in tune with Jesus Christ. Which is in tune with God. You know what is going on when you mess up and you get punished. Because the Holy Spirit lets you know, what, what did you do over here? Gotcha. And you give God the praise. Give him the praise and thank him for all that he does. When things are going so-called bad, you give him the praise. If you're able to speak up and say something, you give him the praise. Don't be embarrassed about giving God the praise. Don't be embarrassed about it. We say everything on the moon, but when it comes to praising God in public, amen. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate it. Thank you. But that's the thing that we got to realize. All through the Bible, God was doing things for folks and he was giving him the praise. All through the Bible, they was giving him the praise. No matter what was going on, Jesus Christ, Job, all of them, no matter what went on in their life, they was giving him the praise because he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. How many of us will sacrifice somebody that we love for somebody else? God's love, God's love, God's love. Folks was messing up all through the Bible, but God's love brought us Jesus Christ for a filthy rag like me. And I thank him for it. I give him the praise. Now that you back in church, because folks was talking about, I wish we'd get back in church. Now that you back in church, what are you saying? What are you saying? You give him the praise. Because can't nobody up in here get you into heaven. And can't nobody up in here get you to hell. It's on you. It's on me. So what am I saying? Am I giving him the praise? Am I giving positivity out? Am I encouraging other people? You got this. You got this tongue. Use it to the best of your ability, which is in a positive way. Here go the last one. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Really and truly, that right there is talking about folks that like to talk. Folks like to talk. But the ones that are talking so much and so 
little about good things, the fruit is bitter. The fruit is bitter. But if you're talking good things, the fruit is sweet. See, that's the thing that uh, you got to love the Lord. Because when you are talking good things and encouraging, there's a different taste in your mouth. There's a different taste in your mouth. You can't say it ain't. And if you ain't experienced it, examine yourself. Because the thing is, when you're talking bad about folks and you got that bitter taste in your mouth, yeah, your breath stings. <laughs> oh, you think I'm playing. If somebody's a real negative person, it comes up from the belly. It comes up from the belly. And give it, ooh, okay. You don't even want to be around them. But that's the thing that we got to realize. That's the thing that we got to be conscious of. That's the thing that you got to realize what you're doing with your tongue. What are you saying? And I'm going to end it right here. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. In other words, and that comes from Proverbs 21 and 23, if you guard your mouth, guard your mouth, that means you need to watch what you're saying. Think about before it comes out. Think about it before it comes out. That's the reason why a lot of folks say a drunk tells the truth. You know, because it's all, this is what's in them. It goes through their filter. Their filter is their heart to tell the truth. But you got to guard your mouth because their mouth can condemn you. We don't talk about it enough. Everybody thinks, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do that. A sin. But also your mouth can condemn you as well. Your tongue can condemn you as well. That's the reason why life and death are in the tongue. Life and death are in the tongue. What are you saying? What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth? We as believers, as saints, got to monitor what we're saying about people. From the presidents to people that we work with to church members and especially our family members. Guard your mouth. Watch what you're saying. Examine yourself. Ask the Lord, what can I do? Help me. Help me because I don't know. I don't know. So what can I do? Help me, Lord. And he will answer you. But you better be prepared for it. Because if, it's, if you're not in a good way, he'll change it all around. He'll do, you'll do a complete 180. A complete 180. I didn't say a 360 because that puts you back where you at. I'm talking about a 180. God has been too good to us. So now that you get the chance to come up in this church, open your mouth. Use your tongue. Let people know that God has made you see from one week to the next. Let folks know that God is good to you. Let folks know that you can give him praise. Let folks know that it was him that rose after three days. Let folks know that it was him that saved your life. Let folks know that he was the one that healed you. Let folks know how good God is. Let folks know what are you saying. Thank you.
say amen. Thank God for that word, power of the tongue. And the doors of the church are now open. Come by Brother Cyril. You can come by Christian, you can come by letter or Christian experience. Heaven is looking down on me. Heaven is looking down.
learn something from the message for which he has preached. I want to encourage you when you get home, I want you to read James 3. And it's going to tell you about that tongue. It's a little fire. Have I got a witness? So I thank him for reminding us every now and then you just need to be, be reminded of how we are. As well, every one of you. And I just, only thing I want us to do uh, this weekend is just give thanks to God for what God has done, for what God is doing. And I just don't want anybody to take for granted this hour. This is an hour you're not going to get back in your life. And what you do with it is up to you. God has allowed you to have it. So what are you going to do with it since he's given you the time? So I just want to say thank you once again to our messenger of the morning. He did a good job. Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. Don't eat too much. Most of all, just remember, you drink happy, you get caught happy. Don't call me happy because I'm not going to come. Amen. Amen. So just uh, do what you're supposed to do. Keep yourselves clean. Keep yourself, as the Bible said, unspotted before the world. I love you. God bless you. Good to see you, Stacy, and your family. And uh, it's just good to see each and every one of you. I pray God's blessings upon the entire congregation. For those of you that are still out, that are still having pajama service, we want you to come back in and to uh, be part of the fold. It's time for the church to move forward. We have a lot of issues that are happening in this country. And it's time now for the church to be the mouthpiece for the wrong that we see being happening around us. I'm not trying to say be political. I'm just, let's say, let's just do the right thing. And so I'm gonna ask all of you to pray. Pray for our leaders. Pray that God will give them a heart of conviction that they will do the right thing. Love each other, treat each other right. Have a wonderful and a blessed week. We pray to God a bless us to come back and see each other on next Sunday. Uh, I'll be preaching in and out this next month. I've got some doing work to have done. So if you see me sitting over here and I'm not preaching, it's because my mouth is being dug in. But uh, uh, I'll be here and uh, I want you to be here. And uh, I just ask you for prayer. I ask God to keep us all, bless us all, help us all. And uh, may you have a wonderful week. Let us stand and receive the benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another. Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great week. Pray!